There has been a surprising amount of interest in Chewy's mini book here that I unboxed about a week ago. So I've now been using it. I'm trying to find out all the ins and outs of this particular model, all the pros and cons, and I think I've got a very good idea now after about a week of using it. So this video here, I hope to cover everything so you know whether or not to back it on Indiegogo. So this particular model, just a little disclaimer here, is a loan unit from Chewy, that is why I have it so early. But this week I have to send it on to someone else to review. So I unfortunately don't get to keep this particular model. But all the thoughts and opinions expressed in this video are 100% my own. Chewy is not involved there, even though I do have contact with them. So this is the base model with the Sauron N4100, 8 gigabytes of RAM and 128 gigabytes of storage. There's a more powerful version which I hope to review in the future with another loan unit which will have the Core M3 8100Y and up to now 16 gigabytes of RAM Chewy has just announced. So if you want to see more on the design and build, please check my unboxing video. But very quickly, I'll go over the ports here. So we have a Type-C port, but you will have power delivery on the final version. The final version will also have Linux support, which at the moment doesn't seem to work at all. We have mini HDMI out, and we have there a full-sized USB 3 port that will power external hard drives. One of two loudspeakers. Then on the right, a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack that doesn't have any static out of it. it supports microphones. USB 3 port, micro SD card reader, which is only wired up via a USB 2 hub, and then our second side firing loudspeaker. Now the reason you're probably watching this video is because this is an ultra portable mini PC. It's tiny, it's very manageable, pocketable, put it in a bag, only weighs 665 grams. So I have it in the presentation mode at the moment. You can flip it right back the screen and then use it as a tablet. Although with that weight, after about an hour or so, it does start to become a little bit heavy. Then you can use it in the tent mode as well. Right now I've got the rotation disabled, but that will automatically rotate as shown in my unboxing video. And most people will probably just end up using it like so as a tiny little portable mini laptop. Now Chewy has gone with a very good panel in this particular mini laptop here. So we've got an IPS panel, it's fully laminated and it does support touch. It does not support a stylus, unfortunately. Now the brightness, I've got it set to 40% at the moment, and you can see even on the lowest setting, I find this to be, personally for me, a little bit too bright. I would like to see dimmer, we could save a little bit more on the battery, and if you happen to be using it in, for example, a very dim room or a dark place at night time, it could be a little bit blinding. On the maximum setting, with that 650 lux, it is really bright. And it is a sharp screen because of the eight inches and that resolution. Now it supports touch, and I find that the touch accuracy is good. I haven't had any problems with it. With the smaller screen, sometimes maybe it can be a little bit difficult. The scanning I've set to 150 at the moment, which I find is best, but it does make the text look a little small. Now when we take a look at the color space, very good here as well, so we have NTSC of 67%, and if I move on now then to Adobe RGB, that comes in at 73%, and finally, sRGB, 98%. Overall, I feel this isn't bad for the type of laptop it is. This mini laptop also does support Windows Hello. There's a fingerprint reader, which is from Focal Tech, incorporated into the power button. So I'll just wake it right now, and I'll show you how quick it takes, only like a second to unlock and go straight into Windows. So I'm simply just press it, and then it said, Hello, Tech Tablets, and it's logged me straight into Windows. I find the accuracy of it to be good, and for me, it is working 10 out of 10 times. So this keyboard, it's a bit of a love-hate relationship for me with this. I mean, I like the fact that it's backlit. I like the keycap quality. Very similar to the AeroBook or, say, the Chewy Lapbook SE. Good feedback on them, and I'll show you that backlight. So it's just on or off. And the brightness is good there. And I do like some of the things they've done with the keyboard, but I don't like where they have, example, the punctuation right here, the tab keys in an awkward place, the caps lock is also the A key, and I find a lot of the times when I move from my desktop back to typing on this again, that instead of hitting A, I'm hitting S, because I'm so used to having my fingers there. So I feel it's going to take a big adjustment, you need a lot of time with it. The more you use the keyboard, the more you start to adapt to it, 
And you would have noticed that we do have this optical touch point here, track point, whatever you want to call it. It works okay. I find that I need at least a couple of goes or probably about four or five swipes to get from one side of the screen to the other. I don't use it that much, but it is good to have this on here and definitely better than nothing since of course we don't have a touchpad on this laptop. On to now a few benchmarks, battery life and charge times that I know a lot of you have been asking about in my first video. So this is the wireless speed Intel wireless AC3165, very common chipset. Maximum throughput you can get is close to 400 megabits per second. There is no LAN port on this, uh, which would be great if it actually had that, so you could get faster speeds than this. Not upgradable either, okay? This is soldered to the motherboard, so no upgrades to any components apart from adding an SSD. That's all you can do with this particular little tiny mini laptop here. So here is the Geekbench 4 score. And I did retest this again, so this is slightly different, the score from my unboxing, but this is fine for the N4100. Now, if you want a lot faster, almost double the single core score, then go, of course, for the Core M3 version. On to the battery life. So I found it to be pretty disappointing, really. I mean, look at this. I got 4 hours and 14 minutes from 100% with the screen brightness set to only 20%. So I kept it down, which is still relatively bright. And I believe it's because, well, I was using the backlit keyboard. So maybe add a possible another 30 minutes, 20 minutes because of the keyboard. The backlighting does drain a little bit of power there. And the fact that the fan is constantly on. So I think that fan has some something to do with it as well. So it's not a huge battery capacity, but not amazing battery life there as you can see. Charge times, you're looking at about 2 hours and 28 minutes to fully charge it. That was from 14% battery. And then the internal storage. So it has an eMMC 5.1 drive. This is just a flash drive on there, so embedded multimedia control is what it stands for. So you're getting 200 reads and about 123 sequential writes. 4K randoms there, uh, they're okay, a little bit low, but as expected for this type of drive. If you want faster and larger capacity, then of course install a SATA 3 SSD. They do run at full speeds, and if you want even better than that, you want PCIe, then you have to get the Core M3 version for the fastest drive spec. So real world performance, this is more important to me. Can you edit documents, spreadsheets, things like that? You can, and you can also scroll with your finger too as well and select and move things. That is not a problem there either. As you can see, if you wanted to do that, you've got that option, having the touch screen. There's now uh, some spreadsheets too. So you can see performance is fine. Do your edits and things, not a problem. I found the overall performance of the system to be quick and snappy for the spec, okay? For the Sauron N4000, 100 because Chewy has set double the power limit. They've sent, set it to 12 watts instead of the default 6 that you typically see. And it does perform good. So this is a 4K HEVC 10-bit encoded file. 140 megabits per second. So it's a very demanding file. We'll see how it plays it. So you get a few starters at the beginning and then it smooths out. So it's actually quite good for video file playback, even these really demanding files. If I skip ahead, you can see that is performing well, very smooth. And the same goes with general other uh, performance of other video files. They all run fine without any problems. Another one of my tests is how well does it stream in Chrome 4K playback? And this is set, you can see, to 4K. I have the stats here. It's dropped 8 frames. And the buffer health is very good, around 30 seconds. And really no problems with that. So if I full screen it now, you might see a couple more drop frames. Normally with that transition, yeah. You see it dropped another seven or so, and it's dropping now and then a couple of frames, but overall this performance is very decent. On to my little Chrome tab test. So I like to run about 10, 15 Chrome tabs. We'll see how it performs. So I'm gonna search cats. Okay, pops in quick, and we'll just load up some random things here. See how well this performs. Shouldn't do too bad. So yeah, I find that you can, with the eight gigabytes of RAM, run about 15 tabs and not really have too much of an issue there with that. So I will bring up to our task manager. We'll take a look at how much this is actually taxing the CPU. So we'll probably be at 100%, which it is right now. RAM's about half full 
and I'll swap between the different tabs and you can see that that is quite quick. Oh, one of them is not loading up, one of the websites. Scrolling performance, so just check that too. That seems quite smooth. It's even smoother in Edge, I find too. It seems to work a lot better with this particular CPU. So I've got two videos there loading as well and really I find the performance, again, because of that double, oh, I'm having trouble clicking that one. There we go. Because of the double power limit, you find that it does actually work better than you probably expect. Now this is a sample from the 720p front-facing webcam. The quality, as you can see, is not very good, but what is even worse is the audio because we're getting interference and noise from that fan that's inside cooling down that Celeron N4100. But it is good at least that we do have a webcam on here, but now I see why other manufacturers probably ended up just dropping it because of this audio quality and the interference we're getting. As for audio, so we've got the two side firing speakers, one here, one here. The loudness is okay, it could be louder, they lack bass, they're a little bit tinny. Here is a sample if you missed that in my unboxing video. Now this one was requested, someone said to me, hey, can it run Grand Theft Auto 5? And with that 12 watts of power limit that they have set and the fan in there, I thought, you know, actually that would be a good thing to do is to test out and see how it performs. So this is currently 1280 by 800 resolution on the lowest settings. Now there are scripts out there that you can use that disable the shadows completely. I think a few other tweaks. It's set to DirectX 10 and I'm getting about 16 frames per second. Temperatures are getting up to 75 and the fan is definitely on. And just because I know people in the comments are going, oh, you didn't test out 800 times 600. It's going to then have 60 frames per second. No, you can see 25. So this is a lot better getting there. Almost what I would consider playable. If it could just keep to about 30, uh, then it would be much better. But of course, you're playing it in such a tiny little screen here. And I will test out another game, so Counter-Strike, something's happened to the textures here. You can see they've gone to like a really low quality. Is that meant to happen? And we're getting 70 frames per second, which is really good. And of course, I died instantly here. I see with the smoke, it's down to 30. So, a very good performance for these lighter titles. So, League of Legends, Dota 2, those kind of games will be playable. On a low resolution, of course. This is 720p on the lowest setting with Counter-Strike. And that just brings me to temps. So I've not seen it go over 76 degrees Celsius. So that little fan, the copper heat pipe, if you want to see the internals, check out my unboxing video where I do show that, is doing its job. But we do have quite a loud fan. And it's on all of the time on idle and it ramps up to 100% when you're gaming or doing the most demanding things like right now trying to play GTA 5. But I will give you a sample of that fan at 100%. Okay, so internally 76 degrees Celsius. Room temperature right now is about 25. I've got the AC on and it will get warm. You can see 40 degrees right here. So the top of it does heat up. This is just under the most demanding use, however. All right, so the bottom of it is a little bit cooler. It gets up to 38 degrees. All right, so I hope this video helped you out if you're thinking about backing this on Indiegogo. I would seriously think about where you're going to be using this. Will it become your main laptop because the keyboard is really, really, really small and it takes quite an adjustment period to get used to it and start to type without having so many typos because I found I'm getting a lot with it. For me, I find it a bit of a pain, but I find all of the smaller PCs, anything that's really lower for me personally than 11.6 inches with the two-in-ones with the laptops I start to run into a little bit of difficulty and I don't have huge hands my hands are medium size you know they're not big at all so if you've got massive huge hands then no definitely not and fingers you're gonna have a lot of trouble with with that so the screen is really good 650 maximum lux is good and the kind of color space we're getting from that is good but I don't see professionals really using this for color coding or anything like that because it's it's so tiny, the screen, to work with. The touch response is good, but the accuracy can be a little bit hit and miss depending on what Windows scaling you are using. So 200% works a little bit better, but sometimes you can't really fit some things on the screen that's great there too. Fan noise is a bit of a irritating, really. Right now, it's on the lowest setting. 
I don't think you can probably even hear that over my lav mic. It's quiet, so it doesn't bother me when you're doing normal things like surfing the web, uh, watching a video or something. It's not too much of an issue, but it is always there and it's on. But the thermals are very good, so it never went over 76 degrees, and that was ambient temperatures of a 25 degrees up to 29, 28 at home. It is summer now here in Europe and a bit of a heat wave too at the moment. So the cooling is definitely doing its job, but at the cost of that fan noise. Now Chewy said they might have a toggle for it, software toggle, so we can turn it on and off, which will be great. Power delivery on the Type-C port is not working on this version, but the final version Chewy have told me will definitely have power delivery support, so you can use your power delivery chargers, external battery packs, because the battery life is only about four and a half hours. That is mixed use. Now if you just left it on sitting at the desktop like a lot of manufacturers do, yeah, maybe then it might last for six hours, but real world proper use, Four and a half hours is all I'm getting out of this. Four hours even, and that was on a low brightness setting, so that's a disappointment there too. But of course, they don't have a lot of room for a battery, they don't have a lot of room for the full-size keyboard. Compromises, compromises. All about compromises, these tiny little machines. But the portability, what you gain, it really depends on your needs and what you want. Our webcam as well, so we pick up the noise of the fan too. So if they can toggle that off, then we've cured at least one problem. But good to see that there is at least a webcam on this. So overall, really comes down to what you're going to be using this for. It is a niche product. I think there are a lot of people in Japan seems to seem to absolutely love these little mini PCs. They go crazy for them for some reason. Again, probably because of the portability. You like small tech. So really, for me, my use has been using this as a portable mini PC. So I plug it into an external monitor with Type-C, and from just the one Type-C port, I'm running an external mouse, keyboard, my monitor, and it's working quite well there. 4K with the 60 hertz too, uh, but that's on the HDMI. I could only get 30 hertz out of Type-C for some reason, so it's a little bit choppy. So I had to lower 4K and then run it at 1440p then for my own needs. So that's how I would use it. So then when you're out and about, you just grab it, take it with you, plug it in the office, plug it in a home to external monitor keyboards, and then you can use it on a train in the meantime with a wireless hotspot. So there's no 4G support on this. So if you want more power, of course, than what I've shown you, go for the Core M3 version, which is about, what is it, 160 or 150 or so US more for that one. But you get PCIe storage support with that. And I do recommend going with an SSD in this because it's the EMC that's in there. The speed's okay, but put in an SSD for more storage and speed as well. So thank you so much for watching this full review here. I hope I answered everyone's questions out there because I've been getting so many. If it was helpful, this video, please in return help me and give this video a thumbs up because that will help out YouTube's algorithm. And also think about subscribing to this channel if you like this style of reviews. Hope to see you back in the channel too. Bye for now.